Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen. Can we talk about Gem and the Holograms? Yes, indeed. Here we are. Episode 19. Can we talk about Gem? Episode 22 of the podcast in general, I guess, because... Right? Am I, am I counting that right? Three? It, 20... You're only adding three, so I would be pretty disappointed if you weren't right. Well, no, I don't know. I'm, you know, it depends. I, I get weird when it comes to counting, but, uh, yep. Can we talk about podcast here? We are bringing you probably not a necessarily unique form of nitpicking, but it's, you know, unique in its own way. We're taking you back to that uh, fluorescent time capsule that is the 80s and actually taking you out of it, bringing back 80s cartoon, air quotes classic, Gem of the Holograms, the terror that is that. I am the neon leg warmers of our time duo. I am Joe. I am a sexy, sexy 80s leotard. I'm Kristen. Whoa, we got a whole ensemble going on here. Just need a headband. Yeah, and then we'll be synergy. <laughs> Getting physical. Aw, yeah. We are experiencing Gem and the Holograms via Shout Factory's Gem and the Holograms Truly Outrageous Complete Series box set, as well as Netflix for you, Kristen, which probably still there, right? It is still there. I still, God you know, Netflix. <laughs> I'm still not sure why we do it this way, considering it's always a delay between us or between when the episodes come out and when we record. So who knows? Eh, 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 yeah, whatever. you're right. This week... We got The Princess and the Singer, an episode title that's kind of a lie when you think about it, because, like, the singer is is Jem, and this is kind of a Kimber-focused episode. Yeah, um, I very consistently, until, like, probably when I watched this episode for this podcast episode, I always thought it was actually called The Princess and the Sister, <laughs> which... Uh, that, uh, that does make more sense, but it also implies that Kimber is the princess's sister or something. Well, it's a play on the prince and the pauper, isn't it? Right, I would think, yeah. So... They're the two things, and they switch. Uh, well, princess and sister, and they switch. Yeah, I thought it was the princess and the stinger, which, unfortunately, it's not a nope. princess switching places with Riot. And how great would it be if uh, they got to this fake country, and there was the princess, and she looked exactly like Riot? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be I just looked over and went, oh, hello, Jim. You don't know me yet, but... <laughs> you will in a season and a half. Uh-huh. Uh, a, a preview of things to come. Ooh. This is the first Kimber episode in a while, I think, right? Like, Kimber, at least, is basically the main... Like, not since... I, I don't even want to say Kimber's Rebellion, because that took... Like, Ashley was more important in that episode than Kimber. Yeah, so this is, like, Kimber's in stitches, basically. Kinda. Yeah, yeah, I would say that. And, uh, yeah, she should be basically happy she gets anything, considering Aja barely moves above B-plots for episodes, like, ever. She's lucky if she has uh, any lines to say at all. <laughs> And, uh, yep, so let's just get on that big old jet plane heading to Morvania, because it's the princess and the singer, and we're gonna play the theme song for you right now. Me and my friends are Jam Girls! Jam! Jam is my name! Exciting adventure, fashion and fame, what's your a Jam Girl? You're never the same! Come on, come on and be a Jam Girl! Jam! Jam is my name! Me and my friends are Jam Girls! So starting off here, we see, written by Christy Marks, whom we all know, and Ellen Guan, whom we don't know. Looked her up, gave her a little looky-loo on the old Wikipedia, uh, listed as uh, Ellen Beeman now, so, uh, you know, congratulations on getting married, God knows when. This probably seems to in be, the 80s. Yeah, probably in the 80s. Uh, this seems to be pretty early in her career as well, because a lot of her credits come from, like, the early to mid-90s, because she did a lot of, she wrote some books that don't have proper Wikipedia links. And she was a writer for the Wing Commander games in the early 90s. I don't know, I, I don't know how long Wing Commander was a series, so, but, you know, good for her. Apparently she still does, like, producing work in video games, like, recently. So, you know, good for you, Ellen Beeman Guan. Uh, I believe the way that you do the maiden name is Ellen Guan Beeman. Uh, I, I don't know. She's not, I'm just you know. I'm just trying to do the proper etiquette here, Joe. Yeah, you're right, because Courtney Cox Arquette. So there we go. That's how you do it. Yeah, you're right. I like that she is your point of reference for that. That's <laughs> an interesting thing I didn't know about it you. Was the, it was the first one I thought of. What's the What's the normal one I should be going to? Jennifer Jason Lee? Is that even... I don't think it works that way. I think Jennifer Jason Lee is just her name. <laughs> I think Jamie Lee Curtis? I don't know. Is there I a, know she has a hyphen, is there a hyphen in there? Huh? 
Hmm. Yeah, well, I think so. Now we make out myself. <laughs> this is a stupid thing that we're talking about. Who yeah, cares? you're right. We got to start with the episode here. Uh, we start with a loud ass jet jetting to some place that has like a Disney castle built into a mountain. And uh, once we get inside the plane here, we have Kimber informing us that this is a country with the very inviting name of Morvania. Yeah, and I I know we're just starting, and I hate to backpedal, but um, I do want to point out that I made a very revealing typo when I was writing the title of the episode in my notes, and I wrote The Princess and the Sinner. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck Whoa. you, Kimber. Jesus, she's uh, all that adultery she's committing. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Settle down, Kimber. Get I thought, right with God. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that uh, you typed Morvania as like Castlevania or something. No, nope, uh, that would be a really extreme typo. <laughs> <laughs> she makes a comment that the airport of Morvania is almost as big as the country itself. And, you know, Jem, Minaja, and Shane are all like, oh, no, we're guests of the royal family here. Don't badmouth the country. When it's just like, I think she was just kind of making a comment. Yeah, they're like, I guess they're expecting her to just start saying worse things. So like at the first sign of danger, they're like, Kimber, shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> Kimber, if you ruin this for us, I swear to God. I swear to God. Yeah, so Kimber just says, oh, I'll behave, even though, I mean, I guess she does behave in the episode, but think she does get into some shit. If uh, you're talking about from the perspective of the kidnappers, then she very much does not behave. <laughs> Kimber, they told you to behave. Be a good kidnapped person. Come on. No! As the plane lands, we find that sometime in the last few episodes, a Gem and company finally, like, they, they took a class or something, and they finally know how to leave an airplane without looking like a crazy person. Yeah, um, though at this point, the whole airport reception thing is getting super old. Like, I get it. Glamour and glitter, fashion, and fame. But we've seen them in an airport, like, every other episode. I, I think I had read on the wiki that this is, like, the fourth country they've been to already at 19 episodes. These damn jet setters. <laughs> And uh, there's a crowd waiting for them there. And here's where I guess we get the Morvanian accent, which is... I, I referred to Morvania before this episode, before remembering what the, like, the name of the country was, as just some Eastern European country. And I'm pretty sure, like, whatever accent they're going for is, like, kind of French-ish. Okay, I don't know if it's on purpose, or some people are just bad at accents, but some of the people definitely just sounded Italian. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, it's, we're weird, maybe it's not even Eastern Europe, then maybe it's just the middle of Europe, where this weird small mm. country with a monarchy is. They had to uh, make a fake country so that their assassination plot wouldn't offend anyone. Right, which is much better than I could say for the Transformers cartoon, which in once involved a country by the name, a, a, a tiny little Middle Eastern country by the name of Karbamia. Oh my god. Yeah, that made Casey that... Kasem quit the series. Good for Casey Kasem, that's fucked up. <laughs> really fucked up they are getting the royal treatment basically talking about how cool it is to have a princess fan their limo takes them to this giant hotel where they get like a huge suite yeah it is the uh the the hotel victor i think is the name of it yep i mean not like that's terribly important but they also said that they are giving a command performance which i looked up because i wasn't sure what the what a command performance is and sure enough it is a Concert, opera, etc., made at the request of royalty. I thought that was a bullshit term that they made up, so I appreciate your research. <laughs> when I hear command performance, I just hear that it's like, you know, I assume that it's like you hear an actor gives a command performance in this role, and it's like, I don't think they're doing that, so, you know. A command performance sounds like what Pizzazz would describe her own performances as. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Or just her own lyrics in general, just a command performance. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, they get into this uh, big-ass suite. They're getting that rock star treatment. And, yeah, Kimber remarks, wow, it must be so much fun being a princess. And here Kimber is foreshadowing so hard, it's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> we fade at this point to uh, Princess Adriana, but there's this weird thing that happens where there's, like, a little magic noise as if, like, we see her in the exact same position that Kimber is in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she makes it makes like the Wayne's World noise, and uh, basically, I thought for a second. I mean, you know, I've seen the episode before, but you can think for a second, like you know, is this Kimber daydreaming? Like, what's going on here? Yeah, they're also um, the interiors that they are both in are kind of like similarly colored, so it's hard to tell that there's even a transition at all. Except we enter Princess uh, Adriana, who looks like Kimber, except she don't got no makeup on. Yeah, she doesn't have uh, the eye makeup, and I think she's wearing pink earrings when Kimber is wearing blue earrings. And I think those are the big differences, other than, like, you know, how they're dressed. 
Yeah, and apparently they speak differently, but I don't quite believe a Aja when she says that. <laughs> yeah, because we meet Princess Adriana here, who looks and sounds exactly like Kimber, who is signing papers for her aide, Demetrios. Man servant. Her manservant, Demetrios. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, she is immediately just, like, looking up, like, I don't want to sign any more papers, please. And he's like, oh, but it's your duty, princess. And she goes, I'm sick of stupid duty. <laughs> so it's comforting that uh, not only does Adriana look exactly like Kimber, but she is also exactly as bratty. <laughs> <laughs> she is a very bratty princess, yes. And then royal guard guy Corvin arrives, who uh, I guess they name him now because he plays not even a prominent role later, but just, a, you know, he's good enough to be named, that uh, Adriana's cousin has arrived, who is uh, Lexa, who they don't say her name until like halfway through the episode. You know, you could tell who she is by the fact that she's got the Cruella de Vil hair and like the, the 80s business power suit. She's an evil skunk lady. She's an evil skunk lady, much like Cruella, Cruella de Vil. You're doing a really good job saying that. Thank you. Yes, it's hard to say Cruella de Vil. And she's a little Cruella. <laughs> Cruella. <laughs> Cruella. No, now you're fucking me up. Cruella Deville. Crepes Deville. Crepes Deville. Uh, she is pissed off that Adriana is, you know, sent for an American rock band to give a command performance, and Adriana just does not give a fuck because in a week she's going to be 18, and that means she's going to be the queen of Morvania, and you don't have to tell me what to do anymore. Like, sign stupid papers, I'm going to bring as many rock bands as I want because I'm 18 years old and the queen, and this economy is going to fucking tank. It's my right. What the hell? Adriana leaves at this point, and we find that Demetrios and Lexa are clearly conspiring against her because it's something to... like out loud yeah <laughs> yeah Lexa says something like not even subtle she's just like oh don't worry after this command performance she won't be a thorn in our side ever again after this command performance she'll be dead because I killed her <laughs> Adriana must not be popular because uh, they do not give a shit that anyone might overhear them yeah that's true Adriana then changes and escapes through her window for some reason I don't know why, because I'm pretty sure she says that she's going out and then decides that she would rather sneak out instead. Yeah, that's well, hey, she's a bratty. Maybe that's just she says she's going to leave, but she means that she's going to sneak out. Or um, that is how she leaves. She shimmies down the side of a <laughs> tower on the vines. We get Lexa coming up to the door as well and saying, Adriana, dear. And we get that line twice as we, you know, pan across her, like, leaving the window. And then we get, like, the Adriana part of it again. So doing real good, uh, being really obvious about reusing lines. Good edits. <laughs> good edits. Lexa goes and commands Demetrios to uh, send, I assumed to send guards to get the princess back. But it's just some thugs that work for him, pretty much. They're um, Morvanian zippers. <laughs> Whatever zipper, whatever the word zipper means in Morvanian, I guess. That's that's all three of their names. Yep. And now we cut, and the misfits are arriving in Morvania. And, you know, Roxy is first to comment, like, you know, hey, where's the press, Eric? There's not even a person holding a welcome misfits sign. Um, and Eric, what happens several times throughout the series is he's like, um, we're not technically even doing an event here. We just kind of followed Gem of the Holograms. <laughs> And we're going to figure it out as we go. And uh, Stormer is like, this plan never fucking works, Eric. Yeah, it's... Pizzazz asks, you know, what's the plan, Eric? And Eric goes, I'm working on it, basically. Like... <laughs> this poor man is falling apart. He misses his son so much! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tech Rat's off somewhere. He doesn't hate... He's, he's forced to have a fatherly bond with the misfits, and he hates that so much, because they're and clearly not children. His rebellious phase. <laughs> So we get one of many uh, wipes now at this point. There's a lot of wipe transitions in this episode to Gem and Company checking out the marketplace here in Morvania. The Misfits are looking around for them here as well. They change their outfits too. They change their outfits as well. I forgot to write down actually specific, other than the triangle jacket, which shows up later, I forgot to write down there's a lot of good fashion in this episode, or at least fashions that we've seen before. This has uh, decided that she needs to be dressed as Jubilee if she's going to hunt down the holograms. <laughs> Oh yeah, the Misfits changed as well, because she was wearing the Universal Appeal outfit when they first got there, weren't, wasn't she? Yeah! Uh-huh, I'm pretty almost positive all of them changed outfits. Oh my god, but yeah, now she's dressed as Jubilee. But, uh, Jem comments that a piece of bread smells good, like she picks up a yeah, piece she, of- she wipes her nose all over it. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> she doesn't buy it! No, she doesn't, you're right. And, uh, Kimber walks off on her own at this point, which I guess is the- the- the worst- misbehavior that she has in the episode, I guess, other than, you know, running away from kidnappers, not being a good kidnappee. Not really anything too 
egregious going on with Kimber uh, that leads to the dumbness that is this episode. We see the princess now who notices Demetrios with his uh, with his Morvanian zippers looking to try and capture the princess and she runs away and like she's looking for like Kimber doesn't even move like into her like path of running. She literally barrels over Kimber. It's like her escape plan involved shoulder checking a stranger. <laughs> And yeah, she, they both get knocked over, and they end up switching hats in the process, too, which might be the reason... Yeah, they're two completely different colors, but whatever. Yeah, which might be the reason that a gem mistakes Adriana for Kimber later, but... If anyone said anything about it, I would accept it, but they didn't. No, they do not. Uh, I also want to comment at this point, uh, Adriana's wearing a shirt with a cherry print on it, and remember the cherry print, because that's going to come back later. The princess reveals herself to Kimber at this point, and Kimber basically has a mild heart attack because her line read of outrageous sounds like she's dying by like by the end of it. We didn't see it. But when they ran into each other, Adriana got Kimber right in the solar plexus. <laughs> so she was out of breath and just like, outrageous! Oh no, I didn't have enough air stored for that. <laughs> the misfits find the rest of the holograms. Jem, Aja, and Shane are all kind of just hanging out. And either this is this was part of Eric's plan, or it's just Pizzazz's plan to just like, oh, there are the holograms. Let's trash them. Yep, and uh, they basically just start grabbing things from this outdoor market. And the, well, the first thing we see is a tomato assault, and uh, Gem <laughs> is very troubled by this tomato being thrown at her. Yep, song one starts now. Here comes trouble which is very appropriate, which seems like it would be a Misfits song, honestly, like, at least by, like, title-wise. I thought I was going to be at first, yeah. But, uh, but no, it's it's a hologram song. I'm just singing about the Misfits fucking them up, because, uh, yeah, we get Pizzazz throwing tomatoes. Roxy knocks over an orange cart for some reason. Phyllis Pizzazz trouble galore. <laughs> Not even, like, the orange cart near Gem and the holograms. It's just she's kind of like off in the background and knocks it over, and the holograms like, oh, we, oh, we gotta move. I hate oranges. Um, Gem deserves to get the fruit thrown at her for wearing that stupid fucking white orange polka dot outfit again. I hate it so much. Yeah, that's definitely. Not, I'm not a fan of that one, but uh, Aja's wearing the scarf outfit as well, uh, which I do like that one, but not as much as the triangle jacket, of course. Stormer attempts to throw a blanket on them like she got on top of one of the carts or like marketplace areas which i don't think the roofs of those things are built fairly well you know olympic climber mary phillips <laughs> and then we get silhouettes of gem and aja and shana running like silhouetted in their primary color other than gem who's using kimber's red for some reason i guess just because she's not here or like the pink might not look as good with the blue and the purple. I don't know why. It just Gem is red. I don't know why I'm even complaining about it. Yeah, it was uh, some like Sailor Moon shit for a, se for a second there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It was actually. Pizzazz throws an orange, which transitions into a shot of all three misfits drawing closer, and then it zooms in a little more, and suddenly this thing that was pretty much rooted in reality goes straight out the fucking window because Pizzazz is a giant test all of a sudden. I know, Joe. That is reality. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> Pizzazz's delusions of grandeur got so great, or she absorbed the other two misfits for a second, and they became giantess Pizzazz, and they run away from her hand coming down on them. Uh, so while she's uh, made to run away, Jem trips over some sort of basket. She's not looking at where she's going, because when does she ever? <laughs> and Pizzazz like kind of picks her up, like I don't know, like she's a stuffed Jem full of hay or something, like a Halloween decoration, uh, and then throws her to Roxy. And then Roxy throws her back to the holograms, and at this point, I'm like, man, the holograms really do just let the misfits just pick them up and throw them. <laughs> well, I wanted to say, it's not like Pizzazz picks up Gem over her head or anything. She just kind of helps her back to her feet and shoves her over to Roxy. Yeah, it's n not really as sweet of a gesture as it appears to be at first, but why would you expect anything like that from Pizzazz anyway? I just want to know why Roxy dropped the ball so hard and threw it to Aja and Shayna and not to Stormer to continue the game of gem keep away that they were playing. Maybe uh, she was trying to knock them down like she was bowling with gem. Maybe, yeah. Well, they were standing against like a cart or something, so at least they had something to fall back onto. I don't know. Burn it all down! Oh, well, Roxy's eyes are bad too, I guess, so she just saw blue and it's like, that's probably Aja standing next to the woman with the purple hair. Or no, I'm sorry, that's probably Stormer. Her oh, well. Ah, well, whatever. The Misfits, like, when they're wa there's a shot of them walking closer and they're lip-syncing to the song, but it's not their song, so I don't know why they're doing that. Because nobody in the animation team knew what the heck was going on. No, yeah, you're probably right. They're then chased off by some uh, royal guards, and that's pretty much the end of the song. It was just, it, it was a means of 
the misfits harassing Gem and the holograms. Uh huh. And it all happened, including Giantess Possessed. <laughs> That's because that's obviously part of official canon at this point that Pizazz has the power to do that. So that all totally happened. Absolutely. Uh, so we go back to Kimber and Adriana, who needed to go look in a mirror to determine that they look exactly alike. Well, I mean, I understand that you might not, if you're the person who looks exactly like the other person, you might not immediately go, that person looks, a, you might go, that person looks a lot like me. You might need a mirror to go, this person looks exactly like me. Uh, sure, but they're having a little powwow about how they're super identical, and then Adrian is like, okay, everyone's still looking for me, I really need to go, so I'll see you later, Kimber. Yep, and well on the way out of wherever uh, Kimber and Adriana were, she runs into Jem and company, who basically, Jem like grabs her wrist or something, doesn't she? It's like, Kimber, where were you? We gotta go! Uh-huh, she doesn't stop and go, where did your makeup go? Oh. Why are you wearing different earrings and different clothing? Why is your hat still the same? This is very strange. Kimber, let's go. So uh, there goes Adriana running away with the holograms. At first she's like, no, I'm not Kimber. Then she goes, yes, I am. <laughs> well, it's weird because, I mean, like, I understand why she would not want to get caught by the goons. But it's, I maybe I maybe it's the hat that made Jem think. Like, it's it's probably not crazy to think that Kimber bought clothing. Yeah, so... I'm sorry, I'm yawning, because I don't care. Not <laughs> about you, about the episode. <laughs> Kimber is calling for Jem at this point, and company, and then she gets dragged off by Demetrius' thugs, because uh, nobody, well, I mean, nobody saw her change or anything, so it's just like, oh, that woman looks like the princess, that's gotta be the princess. Yep, so, episodes in a row, Kimber gets kidnapped. Yeah, wow, that's pretty, uh, at least she doesn't get left in a volcano. Yep, so uh, things are going a little <laughs> bit better for her this time. Uh, it is now that I notice that Kimber is wearing, like, uh, capris with a cherry print on it, so I'm wondering if, like, cherry print was the hot summer fashion at this point. Yeah, put some fruit on it, perfect. <laughs> Maybe it's big in this country, I don't know. Maybe it's the Morvanian thing, the cherry print. Dragons and cherries, Morvania. That's what their flag has on it. <laughs> Hearing Kimber struggle against these dudes made me realize that uh, Ashley and Kimber have the same voice actress, which I don't know why it took me so long. Yeah, that's not something I ever thought about, but like hearing you say it, that I am not surprised at all, of it's, course. It's very, very clear that that Ashley and Kimber have the same voice actress. Yep, but uh, she is very violently thrown into a car, and uh, they drive away with her, and uh, the series is over. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got uh, Adriana as the new Kimber, and that's it. That's the end of the episode, Perfect. everybody. Great. Literally uh, can't tell the difference between them, so. Segment two starts. Kimber's thrown into a tower jail of some sort, like she's in the big Disney castle, I think, right? I don't know. She's, yeah, up on, in a big tower somewhere, and Lexa, <laughs> Lexa's like, Demetrius, why the hell did you do that? She's the princess, and Demetrius like, she's crazy. She says she's a woman from an American rock band, the same one that came here. Oh my god, she's so crazy. Wait a minute. Why doesn't Adriana have a Morvanian accent? <laughs> Uh, she's been training to talk like Kimber. Wow, that's dedication. <laughs> Lexa then continues to talk about the like the conspiracy to kill the princess plans in front of the person that they think is the princess as well. Yeah, so uh, Kimber says, you know, you're conspiring against the princess, which to them must look really funny because it looks like the princess is saying that. Um, and she sticks her arms out from the little barred <laughs> window in her cell and just starts trying to swipe at them going like, yeah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, she's saying help in, in, while well, she's doing that, too. So it's really like uh, she's trying to get help from the people that imprisoned her. Uh, she's not the brightest. All this kidnapping is starting to fuck with her. Yeah, well, I can imagine. Yeah, after they, they close the door on her, pretty much, Kimber moves her bed, like, over under the window and tries to... I wouldn't even say she tries to jump up there, because she doesn't. She just kind of, like, gets on her tiptoes and tries to reach up. And no, then she a, uses that as a boost. And then a rat crawls out of the bed. Rat bed! Rat bed! Oh, no, they're making her sleep on rat bed! And then, uh, yeah, it gets on her leg, and that gives her enough, uh, like, super hop superpowers to jump up to the window. How to jump very well in one step. Rats. <laughs> Kimber's like kind of holed up in this like little window. And for some reason, it, maybe it's because they heard her screaming because of the rat, but like they open the door again to see what's going on. And then Kimber jumps to her death. Yeah, they show a shot of what the outside of the window looks like. And it's like really high up, lots of water, also spiky rocks that would definitely kill you. And it looks like the sort of shot that they would, you know, show to be like, well, you're not going that way, Kimber. Um, but she does. <laughs> and then she does anyway. And 
later in the episode, she's in a different tower, and it's like, ah, you're not going to jump from here. But it's like the, the fucking being up on the Disney castle on the mountain, on the cliff, <laughs> like down into the – she must have jumped. They may as well have been skydiving for fuck's sake. No, what they didn't know was that uh, Kimber was part of the Olympic dive team. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and she's perfectly fine as well, as we all know, hitting the water from a very high distance. Totally safe. Yep, totally not like hitting concrete. <laughs> Demetrios and all the zippers get onto a boat, and they try to use a net to catch her. That's a bad idea. It's a bad... Well, I'm confused as to what happens in the animation here, because I don't know if it's like... It shows them kind of like they're, they're moving their arms with the net, but I don't know if they throw it, because in the next shot they still have the net. And Demetrios is, is even like, you know, oh, you missed! It's like, but did they know that? Yeah, they Kimberly moved? sort of like dives down and somehow doesn't get her hair caught in the moving blade of this speedboat. So lucky <laughs> her, I guess. That could have been some Final Destination shit. Uh, I'm pretty sure it repeats the same shot of Kimber swimming underwater as well, right after they try to throw the net. And yeah, she gets on the dock and is still being chased, but that's the end of that scene. We're not going to see the end of that right now. It's, you know, there's much more important shit going on tomorrow. So Kimber runs all night. Yeah, because it's the next day all of a sudden, and we're at the hotel where uh, Adriana apparently forgot that she was abducted by a famous rock group and that she has to be Kimber because Jarek is standing in the room and it's like, hey, we got to go practice. And Adriana's like, what? Huh? She's, she's like, I just want breakfast in bed today. And Jerk kind of giggles at her. And I said, that probably didn't hint at anything because that sounds like something Kimber would do. You're probably right, which is also why Jerrica turns into Jem. Like, not, well, I should say in front of her, but she's turned away when it happens. Yeah, but uh, the flagrant synergy misuse, not wise. <laughs> I, this is the only time Jerrica shows up in the episode pretty much too, right? Basically? Yeah, So basically. This was one of those things like in the middle of the first segment probably, I was like, I wonder what they're saying Jerrica is doing. Like, because Jerrica clearly didn't come with them. So I wonder if it was it one of those things where they had to tell Rio and the orphans, eh, New York, that's where she's going to be. Yeah, we are like on the cusp of episodes where they just don't even bother mentioning Jerrica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Adriana doesn't ask about this either. It's just all of a sudden it's like, whoa, Jem! So maybe she assumed that Jerrica was Jem without the makeup, maybe? Uh, they don't mention it, so they, I don't care what the they, explanation is. You're right, they don't mention it. But, uh... <laughs> There's another wipe now. They are rehearsing, or at least attempting to rehearse, because any time that they start the song, uh, and it happens twice, and I really like it both times it happens. I don't, even, I don't even think it's a song that they perform, but it's like, or a song that we hear necessarily, but it's they start rehearsing, and then just it, like five seconds in, you just hear, bam, and everything stops, and they all turn which to is what, Which is more or less what it would sound like if someone who didn't know how to play the keyboard was suddenly like, oh, I gotta play these keyboards, bam. <laughs> I just like how it stops immediately afterwards. Like, you know, nobody slows down. It's just automatically like Shanna doesn't... Shanna just stops drumming. Oz uh, just stops with the guitars. Just, they all just like like one wrong note and they all stop and turn and look at, at Adriana who is pretending to be Kimber. Yeah, and they're like, are you doing okay over there, Kimber? And, well, Oz is wearing the triangle jacket, first of all. So there we go. There's that. And Adriana's just about to reveal herself. But then Lexa shows up. And Lexa's first question is basically like, oh, I have a message from the who? Who is that? Who is that over there that looks exactly like the princess? Pardon me? Uh... <laughs> and then we get a very bad moment where I don't know how Christy Marks let this one slip through. Jem, God damn it. Jem goes, this is my sister, Kimber. That's Jerrica's sister, Jem. What are you doing? They're real lucky that the misfits weren't there yet because they would have noticed that. <laughs> And th not only does she reveal herself to Lexa inadvertently, she reveals herself to Adriana. It, like, if it wasn't confirmed before that Adriana knew, now she does. Yeah, so, great job. Too bad it's never brought up so we know that it was just a mistake in the script. <laughs> <laughs> Lexa pretty much changes her plan on the fly as well, because she comes over to tell them that there's a message from the princess. And I don't know what the plan was before, maybe to be like, oh, you know, the princess can't come tonight or something like that. I don't know. But... It just basically turns into, oh, she can't wait to see the concert. And then you could, like, you know, the gears are clearly turning in her head as she comes up with uh, with an explodey plan. Yeah, you can see her being uh, skunky and evil. <laughs> oh, Bro we already have these explosives. <laughs> we cut to Kimber, who has evaded detection all night, apparently. And she looks fine as well. She doesn't look like, like, her hair is fine. All her clothes look fine. 
she must have had a nice sleep somewhere because she's just kind of walking around pretty casually into some dude's house or like a tavern or something where she asks for a phone and the guy doesn't understand phone but he understands telephone so good thing that telephone means telephone in morvanian phone that means something totally different i could have sworn he responds by like saying oh telefonera which i uh, i don't know is that telephone in a different language i'm not sure I did not see that, and I had subtitles on. So. Oh, well, okay. There we go, yeah. I that forgot was just that... a really big flourish that he had. <laughs> I forgot that Netflix does that, so uh, yeah, that's good. Uh-huh. We get another wipe at this point. Uh, we're back at the hotel. Adriana is about to confess again, and she says something along the lines of, oh, it's so hard to tell the famous Jem how bad I've been, and Jem doesn't pick up on this for some reason, because she's just like, oh, I'll just but change no, that back. that doesn't sound like something Kimber would say. <laughs> She's about to, she's literally about to go, she's like halfway into show's over synergy, and then she just, like, like Adriana screams out, I'm not Kimber! And then Jem's probably like, oh shit, thank god. <laughs> Whoopsie dipsy. okay, we're good. And Aja is the first one to point out, yeah, they do sound different, don't they? As if, like, it was on her mind, or like she doesn't want to get duped, so she just says it really suddenly, like, I like you know, all along, yeah. like, like, Aja's oh, yeah. ears are... Aja's ears are broken. They literally have the same voice. <laughs> the phone rings at this point, and Jem walks over to pick up. Kimber is found by all the zippers and taken away. Uh, yeah, one of them tears the phone off the wall. <laughs> I hope they're going to pay for that, for the for that telephone era that the fucking tavern guy has. Jeez. You wish. This is all kind of weird, too, at this point, because uh, we don't go back to Kimber for a little while, and we cut... Again, to Demetrios telling Lexa that Adriana has escaped. He waited the entire night to tell Lexa that Adriana escaped the fucking tower by jumping he out really the window. He really thought that they were going to find her again. <laughs> and at this point, Lexa is already like, no, that was Kimber. Don't worry about it. I have a plan, an explodey plan. So don't you love that the evil cousin can tell the difference between Adriana and Kimber, but Jerrica can't? <laughs> And that's you know her what? sister. You know, I never really thought about it like that. But yeah, that's pretty, I mean, they're maybe they're just so caught up in the splendor of Morvania that they just didn't notice that Kimber is a completely different person. Great sistering Jerrica. <laughs> uh, as well, you gotta love the evil cousin, of course, having a box that says danger explosives on it out in the middle of the goddamn like, just in the- wherever they are, in the castle? Like, it's out in yeah. the middle of the fucking castle! Explosives box! <laughs> Adriana's like, oh, I was gonna just throw these out the window, because that's what I like doing. But nope, we're gonna use them for uh, political assassination purposes. Hooray! Um, so the explosives are supposed to go into a dragon statue that will be on stage with their the performance. Uh, Alexa wants to take out Jim and the holograms while also taking out the princess, so that's pretty sadistic. Uh, I don't know, yeah, I don't, I, I, maybe it's just they're in the crossfire and she only wants the princess, but it's like, hey, if we could kill an American rock band in the process, why not? Although I think- Well, yeah, she has no qualms about <laughs> killing them too, certainly. <laughs> yeah, because she wants the Morvanian throne all to herself, that fucking, that so very important throne of Morvania. I have questions about the line of succession, but whatever. <laughs> Uh, the sound of music fills the halls. The hills are alive with the sound of music. The castle is alive with the sound of music in the next room. And the Alexa... misfits and Eric Raymond <laughs> broke into this castle. <laughs> and we get uh, song number two of the evening, which we will play for you right now. It is Queen of Rock and Roll. My favorite thing about this is, well, first of all, it starts where in the midst of the guitar licks, you just hear Zaz going. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's, giggling. It's, I I thought it was a very uh, fake sounding laugh. Uh, like I'm not sure if it's just supposed to be her giggling or just her like derisively laughing. But yeah, like you heard, it's just <laughs> dicks. Um, and um, the other thing I really like is that Pizzazz is dressed exactly like default Pizzazz, but she got <laughs> a real big fur cape on, and it goes really well with her single sock. <laughs> <laughs> and a crown. Don't forget the crown. Oh yeah, of course. And and a golden microphone. Yeah, there's a lot of really great stuff going on. You know, you heard the song. If you hear that, you can pretty much imagine the sort of imagery that's going on. <laughs> Uh, I have a question about like the room that they go in, like that they go into, uh, Alexa and Demetrios, I guess, to see this performance because there's a bunch of knights and there's a red carpet rolled out to Pizzazz on a throne, and you know that's where the uh, the song starts pretty much. Shayna and Jem are there holding onto her cape as well as there are shots of the holograms like bowing to her because so clearly this is in Pizzazz's head as this is happening probably. Yeah, I'm guessing she probably didn't have the cape and everything. She just felt like she did, which I believe. Yeah, no, that's true. There's also the misfits flying on a scepter, like, around a 2D storybook castle, which we see this shot twice uh, with a crowd that we see later also superimposed at the bottom of the screen. But uh, that's just random music video imagery, I guess, because... Yeah, I really like that because the first time I saw it, I wasn't totally sure what I just witnessed. So (laughs) when they show it again near the end of the song, I'm like, oh yeah, the misfits are flying around on a gigantic scepter. (laughs) And uh, we get a very Gem and the Holograms line in this song as well, with Pizzazz saying the line, I sit on the throne while sitting on the throne. Pizzazz is the ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. <laughs> Ride in a bus, she, walking down the street. She, the Iron Throne is hers. <laughs> We get shots of Aja fanning Stormer. Kimber is fanning Roxy, who is also eating grapes. I th- that should probably be reversed, don't you think? Unless, I, I don't know, yes. do, you, do you think Stormer would allow herself to be fanned by Kimber? Or would they just, she'd be fanning herself the entire time looking at Kimber? Um, I think she would enjoy some fanning from any cute ladies. <laughs> no matter how screechy and not princesses they are. Uh, Shayna serves a drink to Pizzazz while Jem is dressed in a, like, a, a jester outfit, a gemster outfit, if you will. Uh, uh I wrote that down too! <laughs> <laughs> I wrote Jem jester, and I imagine the same exact dots connected in my head that connected in yours, where I went, I'm going to write down the word gemster. <laughs> <laughs> which sounds, which doesn't even sound like jester anymore, it sounds like, uh, like a teamster or something. Yeah, so it doesn't really work, but it was fun to do. Right, I just I just like putting Jem in J-words, I think. And Pizzazz kicks the ball that Jem Jester is, like, jumping around on, and it knocks her over, but the sound of Pizzazz kicking the ball and the sound of Jem falling over are barely even there. It just it, it just kind of, like, it's... It, you barely the music hear is it. drowning it out. Not even the music is drowning it out, it's just like... <laughs> and then... <laughs> and that's it. Pizzazz had got very soft kicks. <laughs> No, she must have really great kicks, because remember when she was kicking all the boxes over and in stitches? That's true. She has full control over the power of her kicks. <laughs> she has a meter. She's got a kick meter. Yeah, that was her lowest yeah. level kick meter, because it was a ball right in front of her. What does she need to kick that very hard for? Even though Jem would have crashed down a lot better if it was, like, full kick it out from under her. Um, Possessed could have sent Jem into orbit if she wanted to, <laughs> but if she was in uh, space, then she wouldn't be able to keep torturing her. So. Gotta, gotta keep those powers to herself. Absolutely. We get the flying on the scepter again for the end of the song, and I put that I doubt most of this happened, and it's now that I'm connecting the dots that when Lexa opens the door, Eric and the Misfits are just outside. So it's like, it's. I guess it's just they put on a little concert for them outside of the door that was opened. I, sure. Um, <laughs> Eric kind of says, hello, princess, I am Eric Raymond. And Lexa's like, nice try, idiot. I'm not the princess. So uh, <laughs> Eric stutters for a second, like, shit. So good job with the international relations. <laughs> I wasted my only good performance out of the Misfits. Fuck. Lexa is like, I am going to use these people. And the Misfits think they're going to get a concert. So they're like, yay. Yeah. And we get another wipe transition. Kimber gives, like, we're back with Kimber now. There was an entire song. There was an entire scene in between her getting captured and now. And she's still just kind of standing around near the zippers. And... She looks like she's going to be taken away willingly before uh, pulling a tablecloth from a table and, like, throwing it in, the, in their faces, which was actually really good because I, I thought it was like, oh, well, Kimber's captured. Oh, well. Yep, uh, but the chase is on. I would like to point out that the real zipper would have caught Kimber by now. <laughs> and left her in a volcano. Yeah, so these uh, three sub-zippers really got to step their game up. <laughs> they are all barely one-third of zipper. Yeah, they, they don't have half a zipper between them. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yes, the chase is on again. Kimber heads to the roofs for some reason. I don't understand why necessarily she does, but she does. And then she does her best Rick Deckard impression and, you know, jumps to another roof and completely whiffs it. I was going to say that as she pulls some mirror's edge shit. <laughs> Almost the same. Hardcore parkouring that uh, fails completely. I want to be a free runner! Segment two ends with Kimber falling off a roof, and it's really an amazing shot because it's a static shot of her like hanging from the roof and falling. The camera doesn't follow her at all. It is just like that'd be a really She's good dead. <laughs> that'd be a really good gif, I think, of just like eh like you know, it's it's so unceremonious her falling. The episode's over. Again, <laughs> sorry guys. Um, but she's falling near a bunch of laundry, so of course you know she's going to get cushioned on the way down. Uh, yeah, segment three starts, Kimber falling already in progress, uh falls through some clotheslines and shit and lands in a laundry basket and doesn't sustain any kind of serious injury or anything. She even says like, she's amazed. <laughs> she even says, yeah, like, oh, I'm alive. Um, okay. And then just finds a taxi and heads for the hotel. Yeah, taxi escape. Adriana, we're cutting back to the holograms now. Adriana is explaining that Lexa probably has something to do with Kimber's disappearance. It's a good guess on her part, but I don't, like, we don't know much of Lexa's history, so I don't know how blatantly I'm going to th- you know, take the throne she has been before this. So I like I don't I don't get well, why she, she would she accuse She looks like Lexa. an evil skunk lady. She does, but I don't get why Adriana would accuse a family member of being involved. Because she looks like an evil skunk lady. Because she looks okay, you're right. She looks like an evil skunk lady. You're right. If Pizzazz were her cousin, she'd be like, this woman's gonna turn into a giant and murder me. Yeah, and she would be right, so <laughs> it's just it's a second second nature, sixth sense kind of thing. You see a woman like that and you're like, Yeah, this this woman's gonna plot to kill me. Uh-huh. So um they get a phone call. Gem answers and uh, we see telltale blue hair, um, <laughs> but we hear Kimber's voice. So we find out that Stormer is pretending to be Kimber and is like, but I'm in the, where is she? In the... The, the plaza, I believe she says. The, you know, the plaza. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Morvania, Chris, and they probably only have one plaza. That's fair. I'm not sure if it was Susan Blue doing a really good Kimber impression or if they actually had whoever Kimber's voice actress is uh, recording those lines because they sound like Kimber, but I'm not sure if it's exactly Kimber. Yeah, she didn't say too much. Um, I don't understand when Kimber, uh, pardon me, I'm all confused because of how good of an impression it was <laughs> when Stormer got so good at voice disguises because uh, up until now we've only heard her fortune teller voice. <laughs> Yes, and, and uh, for the record, Susan Blue is the voice of Stormer, so that is why I said that. Context clues. Yes, I context clues. I know, I, I just want to make it obvious for the listeners. Okay. Stormer's pretty confident in her abilities as well, because as soon as she hangs up the phone, like, well, one, she doesn't wait for Jem to be like, we'll be there, you know, in a second. She does get like, oh, Kimber, is that you? Where are you? But she doesn't wait for Jem's, like, second response after that, after her telling that she's going to the plaza. And Lex is immediately like, oh, did they believe it? And Stormer's like, yeah, totally. Yep, Stormer knows what she's about. So everyone else, all the evil people, go to uh, head off Kimber at the hotel. Um, when Kimber gets there, she's like, oh, where is everyone? Hello? <laughs> uh, Kimber says, actually, in the same cadence, you know, she goes, Jam, Aja, Shayna, like, like in the exact same way that she was calling them earlier in the episode to the point where I don't know if they used just an alternate take of her doing that because it sounds very, very similar to when she was calling for them earlier. Yeah, um, and as she's calling all of those names in succession, this isn't actually how it goes, but in my mind, I like to imagine Eric goes, Eric! <laughs> and, um, then they turn the lights on and Eric and the Misfits uh, corner Kimber and <laughs> Lexa's like uh, these idiots are helping me murder a princess yay yeah they reveal themselves and Kimber is Kimber didn't know the Misfits were here at this point too so she's like whoa wait a minute what are the Misfits doing here since Kimber didn't know that Misfits there now she's just like really confused so I guess that's why she doesn't straight up tell the Misfits and Eric that they're planning to murder the princess <laughs> yeah well I mean she she tries because Lexa then comes in <laughs> what? she doesn't try that hard <laughs> You're right, she probably could have tried a bit harder than that, because, uh... She could have used the word murder and princess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because all... Kimber tries to plea with them as, like, the, the, the thug Morvani and Zippers come and get her, and she's like, oh no, uh, you can't do this, Eric, when she could probably be more like, they're gonna murder the princess. Yeah, so, whatever. <laughs> well, it's weird, because cause she's immediately after that, like, oh no, you don't know what they're gonna do, they're gonna... And Lexa, like, speaks over her, but it's not like... I don't know why Kimber has to shut up. Because she's just like, because Lexa just goes, aha, silence, take her away. And 
that's it. Like, she doesn't try to tell them again that they're going to murder the princess. I guess it's not too huge of a deal because Lexa says it herself. Yeah, well, it's... Lexa doesn't seem too concerned about the command performance for the misfits because... Uh, well, that's where we reveal at this point, too, that uh, I believe Pizzazz says something along the lines of, Haha, now that you're captured, we'll get the command performance. So that's clearly, like, what they were offered. But then when Pizzazz asks about it again, Lexa's just kind of like, eh, you'll get it eventually. Not tonight, though. Uh, you don't want to be on that stage because something bad's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, Eric wants it tonight, and Lexa straight up goes, the theater's going to fucking explode tonight. And Eric's like, what? As if he's never used a bomb before. No, well, that was Zipper. True, but he was the one who formulated the plan. I, I, you know, he doesn't ask Zipper's methods. Why ask what your son's going to do? Just tell him to do something. Yep, uh, so Lexa gets weird and starts, like, petting Eric's head, which I think is kind of the line for him. Not the murder, but he's like, man, she's being really condescending. Fuck this, we're going to be heroes. <laughs> she even says, the dragon will spout fire. Stay away from the theater or perish with your enemies. Which, uh, I'm laying it on a little bit there, but... <laughs> Uh, there's no, you know, no misinterpreting that. She's basically saying they're dead. Oh, also, at some point, um, when after Kimber's taken away, uh, Kimber's like, uh, what are you going to do to her? And uh, Pizzazz says, who cares? So I wrote down <laughs> Phyllis Pizzazz, who cares, Gabor? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Stormer with her classic concern and Pizzazz just saying, who cares? So, you know, Pizzazz with her classic who cares? Uh, and yeah, even Eric at this point is like, holy shit, this lady is evil. And uh, Kimber gets kidnapped for the third time in two episodes. <laughs> She's taken to a high tower, a different high tower, I guess. And Demetrios even says, aha, you won't jump from this one. And Kimber's response is, oh yeah, you fucking want to bet? <laughs> Which is funny because she knows that there is not ocean down there this time. So <laughs> there, there is I concrete thought, this time. <laughs> yeah, I guess she was thinking about those parkour skills that she had and was like, I'll just roll. And I'll absorb the shock. And then uh, it turns out the balcony is very shaky. So uh, she was like, never mind. Uh, <laughs> she goes back inside and goes, oh, Jem, which I wrote down, oh, Jem, not my sister, Jerrica. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, she does. That's the thing. Kimber's keeping a tighter, you know, leash on the Gem Jerrica thing than Jerrica is at this point. So why would she say, "Oh, Jerrica," when you know she's like, "Oh, I don't want to say anything stupid because Jerrica's not here. She's in New York." You're giving her too much credit. I am. No, you're right. I am. We cut to the holograms looking around the plaza at this point, and basically the 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 solution to the problem is, <laughs> Gem says we're gonna perform anyway, and Adriana's like. I can't play the keyboard, Jem. And Jem goes, so fake it! Yeah! And then we're gonna say, oh, where's the princess? And we're gonna reveal it's you, and we're gonna blow this whole thing wide open. And Kimber will have to appear, I think is her line of logic, or something like that. I guess, um, except that is they skip the pretending to play part and actually just go with the second half of that blank. They were like, yeah, you're right. You can't really fake playing a keyboard, can you? Yeah, because we cut to... Well, I, I keep forgetting that there's a little scene here because I did this in my notes too. Uh, we cut to the stage where Demetrios loads the bomb into the mouth of the dragon and Corbin kind of is there and he's like, well, uh, what are you doing? What are you doing there? What are you doing there, buddy? And he's like, oh, uh, uh, checking the fucking dragon for... Oh, God, it's, it's so... This doesn't look great. <laughs> I was just looking at this dragon, and I I wanted to put my hand in its mouth. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> and, and it works. Demetrius does some razzmatazz with his hands and walks away going, shh. And Corvin is like, wow, that man totally misdirected me. Uh, is... And he makes a... A Rio face? <laughs> he does, yeah. I put that he does like a, a Rio-esque death stare to Demetrios as he leaves. Yeah, Corbin is kind of like Morvani and Rio. Except he's got better hair. He does. It's not purple for one thing. <laughs> uh, and now it's time for the performance. And before they, like, it's literally like, and now Morvania presents Gem and the Holograms. And Gem's just like, hello, everyone. Hello. Where's your princess? Where's the princess? Uh, yeah, she kind of confuses the audience because they're all like, I don't know this song. <laughs> I found it weird because she says it in a way that it's like she's holding the performance hostage until they see the princess or something like that. Yeah, so Lexa is like, oh, the princess doesn't feel well. She's sick. <laughs> really good Which excuse. Is really yeah, very well. And she says it in exactly that way, too. So everyone's really convinced because she's like, she is sick. <laughs> <laughs> and Jem shoots back with a very theatric, no, she's here. And uh, that's when Adriana dressed as Kimber, dressed in Kimber regalia. Not even like, I don't know why they dressed her up as Kimber. 
But she walks out and she's like, aha, Alexa is plotting against the crown. And everyone laughs. Then everyone laughs at her. Because it's like, oh, I didn't realize Americans were so good at performance art. This is great. Uh, this is just furthering my theory that no one really likes Adriana that much. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, well, good. All right, great. And then Eric and the Misfits arrive. Corvin's standing outside and Eric is like, there's a bomb in there. Probably in Eric the same. the bomb hero. <laughs> I was going to say, probably delivered the, in the exact same way as in uh, Disaster when he did it. Corbin's like, oh, shit, the dragon. He wasn't just putting his hand in his mouth because he liked it. He was putting a bomb in there. <laughs> the, the reason that it leads to the dragon is because Storm, while well, it's Pizzazz and Roxy provide very vital information, like Lex is plotting against the crown. Kimber is the actually the princess. And then Stormer goes, she said something about the dragon breathing fire, which sounds... Just completely, like, childish and not important compared to the other two. Sounds not so. (laughs) And if Corbin didn't see Demetrius, he'd be like, what the fuck? But he knows exactly what Stormer is. uh, He's picking up what Stormer's putting down. Right. Exactly. And uh, they all rush in together, and everyone kind of uh, screams, and uh, Eric delivers the line, Gem! Holograms! Run! (laughs) Corvin also carries Adriana off stage. Like it's there are some weird cuts because they're not like at the stage yet, but it's no. like th- it's like a cut of them running in, a cut of the holograms, cut of Eric and the Misfits. I think Corvin running off with Adriana, and then uh, cut to the dragon with like the bomb glowing in its mouth. Cut to Pizzazz and the rest of the Misfits pushing Gem and the holograms off stage, and then the bomb exploding. It's a very small isolated explosion too, so I don't think it even would have, it probably just would have killed the people standing closest to the dragon. Jim probably would have been fine. Well, I mean, it knocks down the lighting rig too, but like, that's the only thing. You see what happens when they well, don't Rio have- would have swooped in, praying and saved her. <laughs> you see what they, you see what happens when they don't have Rio to set up the lights? Look, a, a tiny uh, explosion brings the whole thing down. My lights would never do that. <laughs> yeah, the, that's fucking goddamn- Morvani and Rio Corvin set up the lights better, dickhead. Jeez. It's like he has duties to guard people or something and doesn't just have <laughs> one dumb job like Rio. <laughs> Jem is rightfully shocked because the misfits saved their lives. The, the Eric and the misfits saved the lives of Jem and the holograms. Let me just say that like with all intensity because that's fucking gigantic. Yep, and Pizzazz is like, yeah, we saved you, now fuck right off. <laughs> well, no, she says, ah, don't get all mushy about it. Because, like, you would think even if the Misfits were serious about killing Gem and the Holograms as, as they would be some other times, you would think Pizzazz would be like, we're going to be the ones that are going to blow you up, bitch. But no, she was yeah. just like, eh, you know, it, it ain't no thing, basically. I like having rivals to step on and have more money then. Right. It's it's actually, it's a it's a legitimately nice moment between the holograms and the misfits. But uh, Eric notices that Lex is running out and turns out uh, Kimber's tower was right outside. <laughs> Kimber's tower was across the street from the arena. And considering she has an open fucking balcony, she probably could have been like, located. <laughs> could, could have been like, help. Uh, hello. No, she was really scared of that shitty balcony. Demetrius also has Kimber, like, up on the shitty balcony, like, threatening to throw her off, pretty much, at this point. Yeah, and uh, Alexa basically is like, I'm gonna throw your friend off this tower, unless you name me the new queen, and I don't think that's how succession works. (laughs) No, just write it down on a piece of paper. I hereby make Lexa Queen of Morvania. Signed, the princess. There it is. Yep, there you go. (laughs) And then she goes, yay, and then Kimber's safe, and she goes, you idiot, that's not how that works, I'm still the queen. (laughs) Damn it, if only I had known more about royalty succession. But we don't get that political intrigue instead. Uh, Gem makes Synergy project a dragon. <laughs> a dragon that uh, maybe maybe Synergy knew about the dragon of Morvania or something, because it's not like Gem specifies dragon of Morvania. She just says, Synergy, project a dragon. And that's when Lexa Synergy goes... Synergy knows everything. <laughs> yeah, that's when Lexa goes, oh my god, it's the dragon of Morvania. Uh, so everyone gets scared. Yeah, Kimber... The balcony, the shitty balcony breaks and Kimber falls, but uh, Corvin, Olympic tower climber Corvin, <laughs> got up in time and grabbed her. Uh, yeah, o- Olympic stair climber Corvin. Great who job. Uh, the, Yeah, he, uh, Demetrius runs into the guards after seeing the dragon, and then, yeah, Corvin helps Kimber up, basically. Eric protects Jem and the Misfits and company by, uh, like, you know, pushing back on them because the debris falls directly in front of him. And then Corvin does a magic trick because he's suddenly back on the ground floor. <laughs> well, wait, you know what uh, Eric protecting the misfits and the holograms reminded me of? 
What? Uh, in Prisoner of Azkaban, Snape does that to Harry, Ron, and Hermione when Lupin Werewolf is attacking. Huh. He's in the middle of yelling at them and then turns around and he's like, oh god, I have to protect these 13-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that was I, I believe that was an animation error, Corvin being at the top of the tower and then back on the ground floor to uh, order the capture Whatever. of Alexa. But who cares? He's magic. Let's just say he's magic. Uh, and then the dragon lands and uh, like prostrates itself to Adriana. Prays to her, kind of. It, it's like it's down on one knee and its hands are out in a weird like in a weird way. And then high five. <laughs> It's going to high five the princess, but then it disappears. Because, you know, shows over synergy, which synergy could have misconstrued as, oh, turn you into Jerrica? Okay. (laughs) Nope. Crowd chants long live the queen. So obviously summoning the dragon of Morvania was all that they needed to uh, start loving Adriana again, I guess. We don't want to get burned. (laughs) Oh, God, please don't send the dragon at us. Uh, Yay, long live the queen. Long live. And the tyranny continued for generations. Yep, to this day. We fade to a jet plane going home. Jem is, you know, expressing relief to Kimber. You know, wouldn't it be great to just, you know, relax and go home at this point? Nah, I mean, sure. (laughs) Well, no, Kimber, it's like, you know, wouldn't it be great, Kimber? And then Kimber goes, don't you mean princess? (gasps) And then, yeah, there's the exchange of Kimber. It is you, isn't it? And Kimber goes, well most of the time and she looks at the camera and like like mugs to it and winks and that's the end of the episode (laughs) what does that mean what does that mean uh i actually have a a little theory about that but uh oh wait no i'm oh i forgot i keep forgetting oh my god i keep forgetting you don't want me no more but 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 i keep forgetting go ahead Okay, so first of all, um, Lindsay says, we're going to play the new Hit by the Misfits, and uh, we get a uh, encore of Universal Appeal, which was awesome. <laughs> um, and then there's a second encore, because this episode was that short, and we get uh, Here Comes Trouble again. But now we get our uh, weekly gem PSA. Of course, yes. Uh, the superstar, the Jesus Christ superstar, be doing be- the doing right doing thing. Doing the right thing makes you a Jesus Christ superstar. <laughs> Do tell, please. Okay, so um, a bunch of orphans are dancing in a weird music hall, like it's the sock hop in 50s or something, except their <laughs> dresses are shorter. Ashley is there, and she's dancing with the redhead, uh, who I do not recognize from anywhere. She doesn't look like any of the other orphans to me. Uh, and part of her dress somehow rips, because I guess she was popping that ass too hard. <laughs> So the redhead is like, oh no, my dress. My mom's going to be so mad. I better tell her that this was someone else's fault. And Ashley's like, but that's lying. <laughs> what? Then, uh, <laughs> Why would she say that out loud? I don't know. She's upset and surrounded by friends. Well, okay. At least that's what she thinks. Because Jim runs in like the fucking honesty police. <laughs> <laughs> And says, anyone can have an accident, but lying makes it worse. As if she doesn't lie to Rio every second of her goddamn <laughs> life. But I guess that's not what we're talking about right now. Um, so uh, the redhead is like, but my mom made this dress and she'll be so mad. And Jem's like, but won't she be even more upset when she finds out you lied to her? Would she maybe kick over a potted plant and then <laughs> jump out a window on ground level? <laughs> like someone I know. Um, and Ashley said, uh, you know, or won't you be upset when she finds out you tried to blame an innocent person? Jem says, your mother will respect you for being honest, which is very different than what I expect from my boyfriend, Rio. <laughs> <laughs> and the right hand goes, all right, I'll tell the truth. Doing the right thing makes you a Jesus Christ superstar, motherfucker. <laughs> And then I, it's over. You know, it's weird because I watched this and I didn't even think about Jem, like how stupid it is for Jem to tell somebody, hey, don't lie. I'm the morality police. <laughs> Listen to all the good decisions I've made. Oh my god. Oh my god. You know, we have a saying about your slate being clean and throwing stones, Jem. <laughs> oh man. So, okay. So there we go. Doing the right thing makes... <laughs> Not lying makes people a superstar. So Jem is the the uh, a fucking deep. She's the core of the goddamn earth. She's not anywhere close to the stars. I think these things are further proof that Ashley is supposed to have made like a, a heel turn. You mean a face turn? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. No, I understand. I'm not into the wrestling. <laughs> Yeah, heels are the bad guys, faces the good guy. Uh, you know what? I never understood the difference between those two terms until just now. And I'm glad I do. So yeah. yes, Ashley made a face turn. <laughs> yeah, because she's definitely not as uh, bitchy as she once was. Yeah, because on one of the last gem PSAs, I'm pretty sure Ashley was also the one that said, like, to do your drug, you can't just quit guitar, you haven't practiced yet. Yeah, no, so you might Ash- be... Ashley's <laughs> becoming a, a moral pillar for the orphans, and Bonnie, <laughs> if that was me. 
That was they supposed like to be more. Me. I was blind. And Deirdre's becoming the bitch. Good to know. Good to know we're all Jesus Christ superstars here and not lying. So yeah, that was the princess and the singer, which, uh, you know, we got a weird Eastern European assassination intrigue plot royalty episode. And this one always stuck as like, much like with Hot Time in Hawaii, as like examples of things that stuck with me. This one was one where I was just like, where I always remembered, you know, oh shit, we found somebody, Eric found somebody more evil than him, basically. You you remember this episode because you're like, when Eric and the Misfits were like, holy sh- shit. <laughs> That's terrible. Oh my God. And I want to know what did, what did Kimber mean at the end of the episode by, you know, going, well, most of the time, like in reference to being like Kimber, is that you? And I have a theory about that. Like I had said, uh, I'd love to hear it. Well, This episode written by two people, which is the first time that we've seen that, I believe. You know, Ellen Guan and Christy Marks. And I want to think, Ellen Guan wrote the original script to have the princess be a double of gem. I want to think. And then Christy Marks Mm. got a hold of it and was like, you know what? Let me see what I can do with this because I like this episode, but I think I can, you know, change it up a bit. And then Christy Marks wrote it. So Kimber was, you know, the princess there. Because then how could you have an entire episode where the main character is away for most of it, basically? Ah, oh, that's a decent theory. And I don't think it explains the well most of the time thing. Well, but... no, that's the thing. At the end, at the end, if it if it keeps the well most of the time, like that's a carryover from the original script. If it was Jem or Jerrica saying it, it makes more sense. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm Jem most of the time. Yeah. Well, sometimes I'm also Jerrica. <laughs> But hey, that's just a theory. A gem theory. (laughs) (laughs) Now is the point in the evening where, you know, we'll list off all the fun contact stuff where you can uh, contact us. Follow us on the Twitter machine at CWTA pod. You can follow me at Octopus, that is A-W-K-T-A-U-P-U-S. You can follow me at Funny Girl TM, like trademark. You could uh, find us on the iTunes, on the SoundCloud, on the Stitcher Radio. Leave a rating, give a review, do whatever you feel like. Give us, give us a rating and review. We're so close to actually having a cumulative review score on iTunes, but they don't give you any stars until enough people review you that they can average it. Mm, well, good to give know that we're- Give us five stars! Good to know that we're close to that. Give us five stars, star bright. Starlight, how many stars am I going to see in the same joke that I made during the Starbright episodes? Bye! <laughs> you can reach us on the Gmail, cwtapod, gmail.com, where you can tell us all about royal assassinations of your own and, uh, you know, the hot new cherry print on your summer fashion. Sounds great. Next week, we're taking a trip, Kristen, to the Island of Deception. I don't remember this episode, really. I think, if I am remembering the correct episode, this is the one where Stormer almost drowns, and Jerrica saves her very romantically. Oh. They're like twisting around in the water, and it's the most romantic almost drowning I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> also, I think this is the moment real grows that grows purple stubble. <laughs> that was, all right, that was what I thought. That was what I had written down. I think this is the one where real grows purple stubble. So if we're both thinking that, it might be that. I, I don't know. But we're, hopefully it keeps up the pace, because we're really, we're entering a string of like, uh, really weird and stupid hilarious episodes now and i'd like to hope we we keep up that pace after this hot time in hawaii great, this and this is a great stretch of episodes <laughs> so uh let's you know cross my fingers hope it's doing good can we talk about podcast we'll see you next time i'm joe i'm Kristen. and you know join us we'll be talking about some more gem and the holograms checks in the mail <laughs>